Hello there, glad to see you again. In this video, we will be looking at how can we add movement morphs to the long sleeves top we created in the previous video using the Daz Studio deformers. Let's get started. Before we begin creating our morphs target, I would like to briefly explain what a deformer is. We will first create a primitive plane. It can be of any size, but in this case, I will create one with the size of one meter. Zoom in and rotate the view to an angle from which we can have a better view of the plane. Following that, we will create a deformer. We will leave the name as it is for now. Three new items will be added under the plane primitive, the deformer base, the deformer itself and the deformer field. The base will be zero or the home location for the deformer, and the field is the area that deformer will be applied to. Pay attention to the plane when we click on the deformer. The vertex on the plane will be shaded with a gradient of red and yellow within the field. Gradient colors tell how much movement will occur in a particular area due to the deformer, red being the area that will be affected the most and yellow being the least. In simpler terms, the deformer is a magnet and the deformer field is the magnetic field that is the strongest at the center. The flat disk is the deformer base and the top-like arrowhead object is deformer. With the universal tool selected, Let's move the deformer. Watch how the movement affects the plane. The red area will be affected the most by the movement, while the yellow area will be affected the least. We will now reduce the deformer field size to make it smaller. Note the changes in the area influenced by the deformer. If we were to push the deformer into the plane, the area will sink in. Basically, we are controlling the mesh within the deformer field by adjusting the deformer. The last thing I want to talk about is the deformer base. The translate or straight direction movement of the deformer base will not have any effect on the mesh. As an example, if we move the deformer up and then move the base, the change made by the deformer won't be affected. On the other hand, if we rotate the deformer base, the rotating movement will deform the mesh. Sometimes, I would move the base outside of the mesh so that the deformer could be visible as I worked. Because there will be times when the deformed mesh will somehow hide the base or the deformer which might make it a bit hard to work with. Relocating the base outside the mesh will make controlling easier. That should cover the deformer basics. Let's start to create our first movement morphs with it. We will first load the Genesis 8 male figure and the clothing top we created in the previous video into the scene. For this video, the top without additional details will be used to create the movement morphs. With the clothing top selected, we will create a new deformer. It can be done either by selecting the option from the Create menu or by clicking on the icon with a magnet within a circle. We are going to name this Morph Front Up 1 as we're going to create a morph to move the front of the shirt up. Select the Deformer base. We are creating a morph that simulates the movement of pulling the front of the shirt from the middle part of the shirt border. Therefore, I will want to move the base to the point where the movement starts. This is an optional step, but I find it easier to visualize the deformer adjustment when I move the base. With the base moved to its location, we will be adjusting the deformer field next. 
We will begin by reducing the size of the field because we do not want the entire shirt to be affected by the deformer. The next step is to move the center of field to the position where we want the movement to begin. I would like the movement affected area to be slightly higher. We can do that by adjusting the field using the universal tool. We do not want the deformer to affect the back of the shirt. So we will need to scale this down too. Let's start moving our shirt now. With the deformer selected, move it up using the universal tool. We will fix the poke through by moving the deformer slightly outwards. For clothing to be pulled in such a way, rather than getting a flat surface like this, the border will usually be pinched and creased. We will scale down the deformer to fix this. For the front border, I would prefer it to face outward rather than flipping inwards. To do so, we can rotate the deformer slightly and we might need to scale down and move the deformer somewhere to fix any poke through. Additionally, the clothes will pinch in this area when being pulled, and the arch will not be as wide. We will scale down the deformer once again to fix this. Poke through will likely occur on the sides because we had scaled down the deformer. To fix this, we will adjust the deformer field this time around. Instead of changing the field size, we will rotate and move it instead. We will do some final adjustment to the movement before we proceed to the next step. We can hide the base and the deformer so we can see the clothing better. We will now save the deformer so that we can use it again to create more morphs or to be used on other clothing figures. Make sure the deformer is selected. I would like to save it in a separate folder. I will create a subfolder named Morphs and another subfolder within that named Deformers. With the new folder selected, I will click on the plus icon and select Deformer preset to save it. We will name this front up one. We will only be saving with the currently frame only option. With the deformer saved, we will now create the morph. Open up the deform panel from the window pane drop down menu. I prefer to make the panel undockable so that I won't accidentally dock it to my interface as I always do. In order to create the morph, make sure the clothing figure is selected. Click on the spawn morph button, give your morph a name. I will name it front up, underscore, one, and click OK. A new morph group will be created under the clothing perimeter with the morph we just created in it. We will delete the deformer and test out the morph. Great, we have created our first movement morph. However, the clothing will cut into the figure if the slider is set to a negative value. We will fix this by setting a limit to the slider so that the user will not be able to give the morph a negative value. Let me reset the value before proceeding. To set the limit, click on the gear icon next to the morph slider and select the parameter settings panel. Check the use limit box and set the minimum value to zero. This will stop the slider from going past or under the value zero. Click accept. Note the changes in the slider. It cannot be moved to a negative value anymore. We have now complete the setup of our new movement morph for the clothing top. Let's us create another pullout morph.
We will create the new morphs using the deformers we just saved. I will share with you the reason why I like to create new morphs using the deformer we saved. Rather than starting from scratch after we created this morph. With clothing selected, load the deformer onto it. Reset the value of the deformer. We will now create the pullout morphs for the shirt by moving the deformer outwards. We'll again scale the deformer down to simulate the pinching effect of the clothing. The poke through on the side will then be fixed by scaling and rotating the deformer field as we did before. I will make some final adjustments to the deformer. We will rename the deformer base. The deformer itself. And the deformer field before saving it. We will now save the deformer and give it a name front out one. Do not forget to select the clothing figure before clicking on the Spin Morph button to create the morph. We will name this front out. Let's delete the deformer and set the limit to our morph. The morph looks acceptable. Okay, now for the reason why I use the save deformer to create our new morph. Since both morphs are created from the same deformer, the center point of the deformation will be the same, with only a slight difference in the affected area controlled by the deformer field. And because of that, both morphs can be easily combined to form a mix and match morph. Basically, making the morphs we created more flexible and versatile. Now that we have created two morphs, let's proceed to create the third. The third morph we are creating will be one that pulls the shirt downwards. Once again, we will use the first deformer we saved to create this morph. Reset the deformer values. With the deformer selected, move it downwards. Pinch the front by scaling down the deformer. Move the deformer slightly forward. Adjust the deformer field to fix the poke through on the sides. Tweak the movement morph with some final adjustments. We will rename the deformer base. Deformer and deformer field once we are done with the tweaking. Then, save it and name it front down one. Next, select the clothing figure and create the morphs using the spawn morph button with the name front down. Delete the deformer. And set the limit for the morph parameters. We just created three morphs. You can try mixing the settings of the three to see what result you get. In the final part of this video, I will share with all of you how I create morphs for the sides of clothing figures. I will still be using the deformer we saved to create the new morphs. We will load the deformer and reset its value.
We will begin by moving the deformer base to the left side of the clothing top. We are going to move the deformer field to the same location next. We will reset the rotation value before doing that. Next, we will adjust the size of the deformer field according to the area we want to be affected by the movement morph. It is important to ensure the field will not affect the sleeves. We might have to rotate the field to do that. I think the field looks okay. Select the deformer and move it upwards. Adjust it similarly to what we did when we created the first morph. Next, we will adjust the deformer field to fix the poke through. Touch up on the deformers and deformers fields to get the results you want. Remember to change the name of all the deformer parts before saving it. We will save it under the name left up one. With the clothing figure selected, create the morph from the deformer using the spawn morph button. And the final step will be setting the limit for the morph parameter settings. Do not delete the deformer this time, because we will be using it to create the right side of the same morph. Select the deformer base. Edit the value for X translate, keeping the value the same. We will change the parity from positive to negative. The base will be switched to the exact opposite location. We will do the same for the X translate and Z rotate value of the deformer. Finally, we will also change the value for the X translate and Z rotate of the deformer field. I find that this is a much quicker method for creating a mirror version of the existing deformer than creating one from scratch. Using the same method as before, we will save the deformer and create the morph. Let's delete the deformers and test out the morphs we created. Using the same method with different settings, you can create as many different movement morph as you like. Using a deformer for morph creation is great because you can reuse them to create similar morphs on other clothing figures. With minimal changes to the parameters, let's replace the existing clothing figure with a new piece and try that out. Due to the differences in the shape and length of the new top, we will need to adjust the deformer to achieve the result we want. Nevertheless, it is a time-saving method. And that's all for this video. Deformer can also be used by using weight maps instead of the deformer field. I will share more about it and how to save them in the next Daz Studio deformer video. Please support me by hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you again in the next video.